Hi everyone. The life of a test engineer starts not when he identifies a bug, but when he narrows it down to the most possible extent. As a test engineer, my job is to identify bugs. But what excites me more is to dig deep down into the rabbit hole and understand what's happening on the back end of the issue. So here's my story, which explains how I travel along with a bug to understand what's happening on its back end. So recently, one of our customers sent us this access point and asked us to test this. So these are the following features of this access point. It supports both NAT and bridge mode. It's an 802.11 AX access point. It supports concurrent bands. Along with that, it supports MUMI mode with 2x2 two two and OFDMA along with 1GBPS intended load support. So now I'm going to test this. So let's run a basic throughput test on that access point and observe its performance. Uh, and I wanted to check my test setup by testing it with a golden access point. So here is the comparison between the golden AP and the vendor AP which I am testing and uh, so now we can clearly see that there is no problem with my setup and I can point my fingers onto the access point. So now I got the reports to submit to the customer and now I can move on to my other tasks. But that's not me. When I identify a bug, my job is to narrow it down to the most possible extent. So now I need to dig deeper. As far as I'm concerned, there might be two probable reasons for lower throughputs. One is an RF related issue and two software side CPU limitations. So let's say if we have an RF problem, I wanted to check what is the signal between the access point and the client which I have. So the signal is between around minus 25 to minus 30 dBm, which is actually a good signal strength. And uh, along with that, I wanted to check what is the MCS and NSS standards maintained by the frames generated by the AP and the client. So in order for that, I have took the help of a sniffer and sniff all the packets generated between the access point and the client. And I have applied the filters and checked the MCS value. Guess what? 90% of the frames generated are of MCS 11. As the AP is of 802.11ax standard, MCS 11 is a good sign for 5 GHz. So there is no MCS side issue as well. And coming to the NSS values, the frames generated by the access point have NSS 2, which is also normal. So by all these things, we can say that there is no RF related issue. So now I moved my attention to software or system resource related possibilities. Is there a queuing issue? Is there any problem related to CPU or memory utilization? Any artificial rate limiting applied on the AP side? So to figure this out, I have run one minute of traffic and captured all the packets generated while the traffic is running using Wireshark. So here are my observations. Putting myself in dark, let me show you something in color. So we can see that most of the frames generated are control frames in this pie chart. So here is the capture analysis of how many frames are generated. So uh, as we can observe, here most of the frames are control frames and they are occupying most of the airtime. So these are our observations from packet capture analysis. So among the control frames generated, we can see that most of them are block acts. And along with that, what I observed is like access point is not building larger aggregates and there is a lot of time difference between the aggregates generated. So there might be two possibilities for this kind of issues. One is artificial rate limiting applied on the AP side and the other is like CPU and the processor limitations on the access point side. So until now we have tested wireless data path. So now I want to test the wire data path of this access point and compare the both. So here are our observations. As we can clearly see that there is no issue on the wired side of the data path but only the wireless data path has issues. And now I wanted to check if there is any kind of artificial rate limiting applied on the access point side. So I've calculated how many packets are received per second when one minute of traffic is run at various kinds of packet sizes for both my test AP and the golden AP. And here are the observations. So by these observations, we can say that there is some artificial rate limiting applied on the access point side on the test AP. Along with that, I wanted to check what is the latency at various packet sizes for both my test AP and compare them with my golden AP results. So these are the observations. 
By these observations, I can say that the latency is very high for the test AP because there is some kind of delay observed between the packets received. The larger aggregates are not getting generated, which might also cause higher latencies. So by this, we can come to a conclusion that there are issues on the access point side. So with all these observations, I can say that the issue is between the data path of wired WAN and wireless LAN of the access point and that issue might be caused by any kind of queuing issue or system resource issue on the side of access point. So in order to test this access point further, we need the help of CLI commands and understand what's happening on the back end for this. But unfortunately we don't have that. So I have reported these issues to the customers and they have provided us the new firmware. I have tested that access point and here are our new observations. So. Here we can clearly see that there is a lot of throughput increment for the previous firmware versus new firmware. So this is how I traveled with my bug and dig deeper and analyzed why the throughput is dropped. Thanks for watching this video. For more technical content on wireless industry, please subscribe Candela Technologies India. Thank you.